Hey, hey, full eight. Welcome back to my series of uh, Quentin Tarantino reviews, guys. And we're on to the final one leading up to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which I am very, 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 very excited because I love Tarantino. And he's one of my favorite directors. And hear a lot of great things about the movie, which I assume because people love Tarantino. I love Tarantino. And I'm just going to love the movie. But I'll wait until I see it. But. Let's get started, guys, with the final film in the Tarantino reviews, The Hateful Eight. Now, The Hateful Eight was the first Tarantino movie I saw in theaters. This was around New Year's time. This was around the time after I saw The Force Awakens. I didn't get a chance to review this movie afterward because stuff happened, life happens. But I saw this movie in the theaters, and I remember just seeing this movie in the theater, just experiencing it and just experiencing this movie. I gotta say, guys... Hateful Eight is probably one of the most underrated films I've ever seen because this movie is divided by Tarantino fans. Tarantino fans either love this movie or some Tarantino fans just don't really like this movie all that much because I do hear like not so great things about this movie. Some people said that this movie is overly long, that some things in the movie should have been cut out. There are some things in this movie that didn't really make sense. So many things I hear about the Hateful Eight that just makes this movie very divisive with Tarantino fans. Which some of them I get, but just like with the other films, with the exception of Jackie Brown, I really do love The Hateful Eight. It's not my favorite Tarantino movie, it's definitely not, but it is, without a doubt, his most underrated film, in my opinion. I love how Tarantino just went back to the drawing boards and the simplicity of what he did with Reservoir Dogs, how this movie takes place in one setting, Reservoir Dogs takes place in a warehouse, and this movie takes place in a cabin house. And almost like a whodunit type of thing, type of film. How nobody really trusts each other in this movie. Because you have a film where almost everybody in this movie is a complete stranger to each other. And how like this movie just doesn't really have a clear protagonist or antagonist in this movie. Because each and everybody in this movie is horrible to each and every way. I will admit that, if, especially when you watch the movie. But you do get a couple of colorful characters like Marquise Warren, played by the great Samuel Jackson, John Ruth, played by Kurt Russell, Daisy Domergue, played by Jennifer Jason Lee, Oswaldo Marbe, played by Tim Roth, and Joe Gage, played by Michael Madsen. And great cast. This movie has a great cast. And this movie is, just like many other Tarantino movies, very dialogue heavy. Very dialogue heavy, and there are just certain scenes in the movie that I will admit they drag. They definitely drag, and this movie is very, very, very slow. Very slow compared to other Tarantino movies, which are also very long. But this movie is nearly three hours long, nearly. I watched the extended edition of The Hateful Eight, and I will gotta say that the extended edition isn't really necessary at all because I didn't really notice any changes. If there are any changes or differences in the extended version of The Hateful Eight. Let me know in the comments, but I am fine with the theatrical version because I feel that it goes at a much more finer pace. It doesn't really drag as much as the extended version, but both versions, I will say that they're both very good. They're both very great, but the extended version was really needed. But I will say this, if you're not a fan of just a lot of dialogue and a lot of people talking in movies, The Hateful Eight is not the movie for you. Cause this movie is very dialogue heavy, and there are times where I do get to say that, okay, when is some stuff gonna happen? Cause I'm waiting for some violence and some blood and this crap to happen, and people getting like shot or whatever. I'm just waiting for some crazy stuff to happen because they're like, there's like 30 minutes of just people just talking, 20 minutes, 20 30 minutes of just people talking, and it's very like. Like I said, dialogue heavy. That's probably the most dialogue heavy throughout of any of the Tarantino movies. And even like in other movies, which are also very dialogue heavy, there's a lot of stuff going on during those. But in this movie, it's like you have some conversations like in this movie that aren't really very really interesting. And there, there are like some conversations like in this movie where I felt like, okay, you did not have to say any of that. Just like how Samuel Jackson's character, Warren, who would tell the story of the guy, son, that he even had to suck on his Johnson. 
And I'm just like, okay, Tarantino, you did not have to write that in this film. That was very unneeded. You could have just cut that out. But I do love the sort of abusive and toxic relationship between John Root and Daisy Domergue. How, like, these two are just chained together. These two can't stand each other, but they're stuck together. And every time Daisy Domergue says anything, or even when she doesn't say anything, John Root just punches her in the face. Like, just beats her up. And those two... Together, Kurt Russell and Jennifer Jason Lee did chemistry in this movie. They're like sick and twisted chemistry in this movie, which is like perfection. It's probably one of my favorite aspects of this movie, other than Samuel Jackson and other people's performances in this film. Those two together were just hilarious. The other thing that happened in this movie, actually early on in this film, on how Joe Gage and Oswaldo and the Mexican guy got to the cabin, because they were along with Channing Tatum's character. Channing Tatum, who is the sibling of Davey, Daisy Domerdu, that is her brother, and how he appears later on in this movie. How throughout the entire movie, bef uh, even like soon as he got to the cabin, before like Warren and Mannix and John Root and Daisy Domerdu got to the cabin, he was at the floor under, underneath the floor throughout the entire time. And even when that happened, I'm like, okay. That was a twist I was not expecting at all. That was very cool Tarantino, but then he gets killed later on in the movie. And later on, you find out that Dixie Darmgill is the antagonist in this movie. She's the main antagonist or the main villain or whatever. Which, that was a twist I didn't see coming as well, but I... At first, I was like, okay. But after rewatching it, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I can buy her as the antagonist. She does a good of a job as she gets in this movie, and I didn't really, like, I didn't love it, but I was like, okay, cool, Tarantino, cool. Just like how Django Unchained had a satisfying finale, this movie had a satisfying finale, how Mannix and Warren, how they decided to kill her off, they decided to shoot her like they did with the others, they decided to just hang her. And I thought to myself, wow. Wow, wow, wow. That was very cool. That was very unique. And you don't have to have, like, graphic violence. I mean, that was very graphic, just hanging somebody. Like, almost like lynching. But having, like, explosions and gunshots and stabbing and decapitation and all the other, like, bloody violent stuff. You don't have to have all that just to kill a character off. Sometimes you can do the simple strangling or hanging or just to the basics you're gonna do that and with a character like her who is very annoying and jarring throughout the entire movie yeah she got her just desserts the hateful eight isn't my favorite tarantino movie i wouldn't say like it's in my top three or top five but it is very underrated and it doesn't deserve all the criticism it gets you know i agree with some of the criticism but some people go overboard with it i understand them I just don't think it's like to the max that it gets. But Hateful Hates is a good Tarantino movie that I can just watch any time of day. But I wouldn't like immediately watch it like I deal with Inglorious Bastards or Pulp Fiction. I'm gonna give the Hateful Eight an A minus. Thank you so much for watching guys. And finally I am on my way to go see Once Upon a Time in Hollywood pretty soon, guys. And thank you so much for watching and let me know what you think of the Hateful Eight. In the comment section down below and as always guys if you are new to my channel and you like this video like comment subscribe and i'll see you guys next time